I'm Nancy Thomas. I have lived with and worked with severely emotionally disturbed children for 30 years now. I love my job. I love challenging children. I love the defiant, destructive ones. You know, some people have like normal children. I understand with normal children that they do stuff like they come home from school and they say, you know, could I have a snack? And they sit and have a snack and then they do their homework and then they go out and play, you know, and they do their chores and they eat supper and take a bath and go to bed. And it's just like calm and <laughs> that's not what happens in my house. We have excitement. We have challenging opportunities of how can we handle this particular situation and wow, opportunities to advance my patience. <sighs> Thank you for that. Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. So my children are more interesting and more challenging, um, and I love it that way. Uh, it's kind of like a live chess game. Okay, you're making a move here. Well, we're gonna, you know, we're <laughs> but I, I want them to win, as well as have me win because we're on the same team. And the children a lot of times think we're on opposite teams in the classroom and at home. They think if they do it your way, they lose. Well, how many of you like to lose? <laughs> no, we don't. So they're constantly battling us. They don't understand we're on the same team. We want them to win. And we get them to win by doing it our way. Because we have the ball. We pass it back and forth and we get to the goal and we shoot. All right? So the children that I've lived with, 90% of them had killed before they came to live with me. I'm talking about severely disturbed children. And the techniques that I'm going to share with you were honed on this group of children. So some of the techniques might be too much. You might need to say, whoa, that would scare this child to death. We're not going to do that. You know, some of them might not be enough. You need to up it a little bit. Every child is different. We're all unique. So keep that in mind as we're talking about different things. We're going to start with understanding the problem because we need to know <laughs> what we're dealing with. A lot of people don't like to label the child because it's a burden they have to carry their whole life if they get labeled. But we're talking about emotional disturbance and we need to know what we're dealing with. If you have a child with a broken leg, we need to label it so we know which one's going to have a cast on it and which one we don't want them to put weight on. So we need to know what's going on with the child and which condition we're dealing with to be able to help them out. We're going to go great in depth with attachment disorder because attachment is the root of all mental illness and the huge epidemic of emotional disturbance that we're seeing has its problem base at the attachment level. So we're going to cover that in depth because it's causing problems with attention, ADD, ADHD. It's causing problems in the classroom, it's causing problems at home and we need to know what the problem is so we know how to deal with it properly. How we connect, that's how we interact. Attachment disorder is a break in that connection. So if you look at the family, is a group of people working together to make the house a home. When we have attachment disorder, one or more of the members is ripped from the group. They learn to tune their body out because it's too painful. So they learn, I met my own needs. I've tuned out that hunger. I am like God. I deserve to have everything that I want. I'm smarter and more powerful than anybody in my environment. When they have urine burning their skin, hour after hour without being cleaned up, they learn to tune their body out. And it's a huge problem later on because we have to be able to feel pain to say, I have a stomach ache. I need help or I need to not eat that again or whatever we learn because our body gives us signals when we're hungry, when we're full and when we've tuned our body out we have huge problems with that. Because they don't feel their own body, they don't feel other people's pain. You know when your kids get hurt and they're getting stitched up or you have to clean up, you, you get that knot in your stomach of, oh you know, I feel their pain. Well, I don't hurt people because I feel other people's pain. You know, if I slapped you, I, it would just kill me. I'm like, oh man, I'm so sorry. Well, because they don't feel their own pain, they don't feel other people's pain, so they can cause all kinds of physical damage to another person and feel nothing. So that huge red flag of I hurt can be displayed by hurting another animal or another living being. So we need to protect them from that because they do not have empathy.